Mughal administration was having the centralized tendencies. Okay, in the Mughal administration, the Mughal Empire. Hello everyone, welcome to Plutus IS. Myself Vivek Raj. So in this particular session, I will be having discussion on the public administration paper 2 that took place very recently. So first of all, you can see that question paper is on the background. But before this, we will try to understand the nature of question paper, like what kind of questions have been asked this year. So basically, if we are looking into this year question papers, whether it is like uh, the paper one or the paper two, the questions have been very straightforward, right? So considering the, we can see the easy to moderate level of question paper, definitely people will be scoring more because you know, you can uh, scrutinize, you can look into all the questions. They are directly coming from the main topics we can say. The kind of top topics that we are having in the syllabus directly questions have been asked from there. For example, here the question is on ethics in public service has been main concern of Kautilya's Arsastra. Okay. So definitely when we used to cover the uh, paper two, then we definitely used to refer to this Kautilya administration at the very first place we can say, right. And then after that we are having the Mughal administration. So it is talking about the Mughal administration also. So looking into these aspects, definitely we can conclude that this year paper after like uh, a gap of approximately we can say the five or six year at least or more than this, this type of paper has not been seen. Now this year paper is obvious and definitely we can say the public administration is going to have the achidin, right? Because uh, this time it is motivating people that yes, we are studying. So it can be like the paper is doable, right? People are feeling happy looking into this question paper, right? So <clears throat> now without wasting any time, we will be moving on to the question paper uh, questions and we will be looking into like how uh, we can approach the questions, right? Definitely complete answer will not be possible like we are, that we are discussing and that is not required also, okay? But what we will do here is that uh, we will be understanding the approach. We will be understanding the idea how we should be dealing with the questions. Okay? So here you can see that uh, ethics that is ethics in public services has been the main concern of Kautilya's Arsastra, right? So definitely question is on Kautilya or Sastra. So in the introduction part, you can talk about the Kautilya or Sastra briefly. Okay. So introduction may you will be briefly talking about the Kautilya or Sastra. Okay. Then after that, if you are talking about the structure, structure. So what we are writing in the intro okay we will take the help of note okay so if we are talking about the structure so what i am suggesting that in case of the introduction we will be having idea about the Kautilya Arthashastra. So introduction me briefly you will talk about this. Then we have the body. So what we will do in the body. Okay. And moreover in the optional paper I clearly mentioned at the time of paper 1 discussion that when it comes to the <coughs> optional paper, then it is not necessary to design the questions, the design the answers I mean to say in a very like introduction body part and the conclusion, 
that kind of rigid structure is not required. It is not required, right? What you are supposed to do is that you should provide solution to the problem. The kind of problem that has been asked, you should provide solution to that, okay? So, we will be reading the question again so that we will be getting idea what to write in the body part, okay? So, ethics in public service, public services has been the main concern of Kautilyar Arshastra, right? So, definitely in the body part, in the body part, you can talk about how, how ethics, how ethics has been, has been the major concern, major concern of public services of public services okay so this you will be talking about in the body part okay now what exactly you will be talking about what exactly you will highlight when it comes to uh, the body part okay so basically if we are looking into the kautilya sastra so it has provided for importance of ethical conduct overall we can say it has provided for the importance of ethical conduct like it was time and again talking about the certain virtues in the administration like whenever the administrative functions will be performing then it has to focus on the honesty it has to focus on the justice it has to focus on the integrity and so on so definitely looking into these aspect we can say that uh, it is following the ethical principles the ethics was important in the administration of the, uh, you know, the as per the Kautilyar Sastra, right? So, we can say that, that also. Then, the kind of administration that we witness during the Mauryan empires, uh, so at that point of time, the Kautilya Arsh Sastra highlighted that the administration was transparent the administration was accountable, right? So, looking into this, if nowadays also, if we are having the transparency and accountability in the system, can we say that, ki wo system ethical values ko follow kar raha hai? Yes, definitely we can say that. So, all these kind of features were available in case of that, okay? And the administration was also having the, what do you call, social welfare. Social welfare was the agenda of the administration. So, looking into that, again we can say that yes, Mauryan administration or the Kautilya Sastra highlighted the social welfare. Definitely it is related to the ethical aspect. Okay? After that we are talking about the, it has talked about the symbiotic relation between the ruler and the populace. If it is talking about the symbiotic relation between the ruler and the populace, the population, the subjects we can say definitely we can say we are giving emphasis to the you know the we can say the political values we are understanding that yes it is the people for whom the rulers should be working not otherwise that the ruler is just enjoying all the rights without any consideration for the what you call uh, you know the people but kaise kaam kar rahe logon ka dhyan mein rakhte hue ruler kaam kar rahe so every time people is people is the focus Social welfare is the focus. Transparency and accountability is the focus. So, looking into this, definitely it can be concluded that uh, the, what was the question? Ethics in public services has been the main concern of Kautilya Sastra. Uh, so, it is talking about the examine the statement. So, aap pe examine the statement ka kya matlab hai? You will be highlighting the facts, what you are getting from the Mauryan administration insight given by the Kautilya Sastra and then you will be commenting on that. You will be examining whether it was available or not. Okay? So, simply you will be explaining the idea which was available at that point of time. So, this way then you will be uh, agreeing to this statement. Hai na? Examine karoke, like we have found above that yes, the, Maur uh, the Kautilya Sastra was emphasizing on that ethical you know, question language, ethics in public services has been the major concern. So, ethics in public services has been the major concern that we have seen from the above points. Okay? So, this way, 
you will be concluding this answer and uh, I hope it is making good sense and everyone will be able to frame. So straightforward type of question here, but we had some static information in uh, it. Now, <coughs> we are having the next question. So what is this next question? The Mughal administration was by nature centralized. That's all. Question is simply talking about that Mughal administration is by nature a central system. Right? So here the question is on Mughal administration. So what all you are supposed to do? You are supposed to recall the points with respect to the Mughal administration. Aapko kuch nahi karna hai. Mughal administration ke points yahan pe likhi and definitely matching to the demand of the question. The question ki demand kya hai? That Mughal administration was by nature central. Okay? So here we can say that Mughal administration was having the centralized tendencies. Okay? In the Mughal administration, the Mughal empire, the Mughal empire was having the hierarchy of a state with a centralized structure, centralized administration, we can say that. Okay? And the centralized administration was actually headed by the emperor. Okay? It was headed by the emperor and there were four ministers four ministers to support the uh, you know we can say this way it will be making good sense so here four ministers were there we can write this four ministers so these four ministers were supposed to support the emperor and this way the administration was dealt so looking into this aspect that the ad central ad administration was headed by the emperor and he was performing the duty of administration by with the help of four ministers. Okay? So this is one. Then after that we can talk about that uh, Mughal empire was adopting the uniform administration. Uniform administration and for each of its you know uh, uniform administration for each of its you know 12 uh, uh, subhas or the provinces were there. Okay? So, if uh, why, uh, why we are talking about the uniform structure, uniform uh, procedure? Because suppose as of now we are talking about India. So, India we have a structure. Hai? <coughs> what kind of a structure we are having? So, as of now in, in case of India, we are having certain states, we are having certain union territories. Hai na? But pe, they were maintaining the uniform kind of administration. And is me kya Centralized tendencies thoda zada hongi. It is not necessary, but I'm I'm just talking about that comparatively it will be more. Okay. So because the emperor will have the clarity, emperor will have the direct control, we can say. So it will be leading towards the centralized administration, what the question is asking. Okay. Then you will be talking about the like uh, the bureaucratic government, the kind of bureaucratic structure that we were having in case of the Mughal administration, they were very centralized. Okay? So Mughal government and the bureaucracy was centralized. Centralized ka matlab, I hope is very clear that the power is exercised from the top. It The power is not distributed among the units, among the local level bodies, like district level pay decisions will not be you know that easily uh, they can be taken no the centralized administration will be one where the things will be controlled from the top and this was the feature of the mughal administration okay so hamar pas ministries jo hai to ministries four ministries kaun si thi the we have the military uh, finance ministry military then law law and religious then ministry of imperial household so these kind of ministries were there and they were dealing with all kind of affairs which were taking place in the administration and they were reporting to the emperor, right? So that way we can say definitely that uh, uh, it was having the centralized kind of tendencies, okay? And then, then definitely 
it is not like that in the modern administration there was no local administration yes local administration was available but more or less it was controlled by the central administration okay so i hope this is also very very uh, uh, making good sense theek hai so that uh, we can conclude with this notion that mughal administration was more or less uh, working with the help of four ministries yes there was local administration local bureaucracy but things were uh, controlled from the very top and that way it can be comfortably concluded that the modern administration was uh, you know the very centralized in nature theek okay? hai so what conclusion we can draw out of these two questions both these two questions are static kind of questions aapko yahan pe sirf pata hona chahiye how what were the features of kautilya shastra what were features of mughal administration and central like how definitely when you will be aware of features you will be able to conclude on the lines of that it was the centralized kind of administration theek okay? hai so now moving on to the next question that is the third one so here this is something which which is you know different from the historical kind of questions or uh, we can say different from the static knowledge hai na जो थर्ड क्वेश्चन हमारे पास है दैट इज समथिंग विच ऑलवेज यूज टू बी इन द न्यूज आप अगर नहीं भी स्टैटिक इंफॉर्मेशन को आपके पास होगी देन इट्स फाइन बिकॉज इट्स नाउ ऑल्सो दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम है ना ये स्टडे दिस इज दिस वॉज द प्रॉब्लम टूमोरो मे बी प्रॉब्लम विल बी सेम बिकॉज वी हैव बीन विटनेसिंग फ्रॉम सो मेनी इयर्स टिल नाउ राइट सो लुकिंग इन टू दैट विल बी लुकिंग इन टू दिस क्वेश्चन ठीक है सो वॉट इज से the autonomy of autonomy to public undertakings autonomy to public undertakings what is the problem it is not working okay looking into the autonomy of public undertaking autonomy to public undertaking is a myth analyze so india ke case mein basically aisa bola jata hai that to autonomy to autonomy to public public undertakings undertakings is a myth aisa bola jata hai theek hai ek bar question ko aur dekhenge what tail word it is having it is talking about the analyze theek hai so accordingly now we'll discuss ki what we are supposed to uh this right here theek hai so it is being said question ko padh ke kaisa lag raha hai that it is about ki autonomy ho hi nahi sakti autonomy is not possible it is just a myth hai na and it is very difficult to bring about uh, autonomy or we can say ki hamara jo past raha hai that that we have witnessed to wahan pe every time they have they they were subjected to the government control and they were not the autonomous bodies theek okay. hai so before jumping into this question before talking about the uh, you know the structure for this particular question i want to give you brief idea about the psus so why the public sector undertakings are being created theek okay. hai to aapko introduction mein wahi likhna hoga in the introduction part you will be talking about that public sector undertakings or the you know the what do you call this public undertakings you know public sector undertakings inko psus bolte hain popularly they were created for certain sectors where more responsibility was there theek okay? hai and uh, the government was thinking that we should have the major state because somehow we cannot privatize all those things right so they will be the government owned companies government will be having more uh, more than 51% of the share in these companies right so <clears throat> they were provided uh, why, and and now you can uh, raise a question that why government is not doing uh, a particular work for example indian oil corporation or the ongc they were they are working in a certain field so why government is not directly able to do that government ke liye possible nahi hai government is also a human being having limited two hands so it will not be possible for the government to do each and everything so hum uske liye kya kar rahe hain 
हम एक गवर्नमेंट कंपनी बना रहे हैं पब्लिक अंडरटेकिंग पब्लिक अंडरटेकिंग बनाएंगे नाउ दैट कंपनी ऑल दो विल बी ओन्ड बाई द गवर्नमेंट लेकिन वो प्राइवेट की तरह काम करेगी प्राइवेट की तरह काम करेगी एंड हम बना ही इसलिए रहे हैं कंपनी सो दैट इट विल बी एफिशिएंसी विल बी ब्रॉट अबाउट द इफेक्टिवनेस विल बी ब्रॉट अबाउट द अकाउंटेबिलिटी कैन बी ब्रॉट अबाउट इन ए बेटर वे द ट्रांसपेरेंसी विल बी देयर एंड द स्पीडीनेस ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट्स विल बी देयर ठीक है इस पर्पस से हमने पी को बना दिया बट सिंस वी आर सेंग दैट दे आर द गवर्नमेंट ओन्ड कंपनी गवर्नमेंट इज हैविंग मेजर शेयर इन दीज कंपनीज तो यहां पे क्या होगा दैट ऑल द बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स द यू नो द मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर्स वी कैन से दे विल बी मेनी टाइम्स दे विल बी द ब्यूरोक्रेट्स आल्सो ठीक है अब गवर्नमेंट के एम्प्लॉय यहां पे डायरेक्टर है प्राइवेट कंपनी कैसे होती है वहां पे इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर्स होंगे बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स विल बी देयर एंड दे विल बी यू नो डिफरेंटली यू नो दे विल नॉट बी पार्ट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑब्वियसली बट पीएसयूज में क्या होगा सिविल सर्वेंट आईएएस ऑफिसर विल बी द व्हाट यू कॉल Will be in the board of directors, है ना? तो I mean to say कि civil servants like any government employee can be appointed. तो उससे क्या होगा? Do you think that it they will be able to perform in a very autonomous manner? They will be able to take the decision whatever they they think they, they think is good. Certainly no, ऐसा possible नहीं होगा. So in this context only it is being highlighted that autonomy to public undertaking is a myth. it is very difficult okay and when the manmohan singh government was there in the center it was also emphasizing on this particular thing that uh, public undertaking ki hame you know autonomy ko badhana hai so how exactly we can provide the autonomy so we can provide the you know more financial and the managerial autonomy right for example how the supreme court judges are independent how they are able to take the you know uh, decision freely and frankly because their salary is being charged on the consolidated fund of india wo to kafi dur ki baat ho gayi here at least we can provide some kind of financial you know uh, uh, kind of uh, freedom and this they should be having the separate kind of finances to deal with their day to day to day affairs so that every time they are not looking into the government for any particular decision theek hai So, हमें क्या करना है फाइनेंशियल ऑटोनॉमी प्रोवाइड करानी है क्योंकि अगर आप किसी इंसान से उसका एक्चुअली पोटेंशियल लाना चाहते हो सो दैट पर्सन शुड बी इंडिपेंडेंट उसका जो काम करने का तरीका है उसको वो आजादी मिलनी चाहिए अदरवाइज इफ यू विल बी हैविंग ऑल द टाइम ऑफ कंट्रोल ऑल द टाइम यू विल बी हैविंग कंट्रोल देन इट मे बी डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू टू ब्रिंग अबाउट द कंट्रोल ठीक है ब्रिंग अबाउट द एफिशियंसी वी कैन से तो इसलिए हम बोल रहे हैं कि यहाँ पे फाइनेंशियल ऑटोनॉमी देनी चाहिए एंड उसके बाद वी आर टॉक अबाउट द मैनेजरियल ऑटोनॉमी ठीक है देन फॉर दैट वी आर हैविंग दैट सिक्योरिटी ऑफ टेन्योर इज नॉट अवेलेबल इन केस ऑफ द पी एस यूज द पब्लिक अंडरटेकिंग आर जब गवर्नमेंट का मन किया डायरेक्टर्स को हटा दिया मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर को हटा दिया सो दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्टर इज देयर ही इज हैविंग द अंडरस्टैंडिंग और ही इज हैविंग द अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉट वॉट वी आर सपोज टू डू बट उसका टेन्योर ही नहीं है उसने एक साल काम किया उसको कहीं और ट्रांसफर कर दिया किसी और मिनिस्ट्री में भेज दिया कुछ भी कर दिया वापस बुला लिया सेंट्रल डिप्यूटेशन पे राइट तो यहाँ पे प्रॉब्लम हो रही है बिकॉज उस इंसान ने वहां पे काम किया था तीन साल तक एंड नाउ ही गॉट अबाउट द ग्राउंड रियलिटीज कि वहां पे उस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को कैसे ठीक करना है सो फॉर दिस पर्पज इन ऑर्डर टू ब्रिंग अबाउट द ऑटोनॉमी फॉर द पब्लिक अंडरटेकिंग यहाँ पे हम अगला पॉइंट बोल सकते हैं दैट सिक्योरिटी ऑफ टेन्योर शुड बी देयर एंड हेयर वी कैन सजेस्ट दैट सी एम डीज के लिए विल हैव द फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ टेन्योर एंड डायरेक्टर्स के लिए देर शुड बी थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ टेन्योर इतना तो होना ही चाहिए देन ओनली पीपल विल बी एबल टू ब्रिंग अबाउट द एफिशियंसी ठीक है एंड इफ यू कैन रिलेट तो सिक्योरिटी ऑफ टेन्योर हम वहां पर भी बात करते हैं सिविल सर्विस की एंड द सेकेंड ए आर सी एंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज मैंशन की सिविल सर्विस बोर्ड स्टैब्लिश करने चाहिए है ना सिविल सर्विस के लिए क्योंकि आई ए एस ऑफिसर एक डिस्ट्रिक्ट में काम करेगा फॉर सम टाइम एंड छह महीने बाद उसका ट्रांसफर कैसे काम कर पाएगा सिक्स मंथ पर्सन विल बी टेकिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द इश्यूज प्रवेलिंग इन द पर्टिकुलर डिस्ट्रिक्ट तो इट विल बी हाईली डिफिकल्ट सो इसलिए हम बोल रहे हैं कि सिक्योरिटी ऑफ टेन्योर होना चाहिए कम से कम इंसान तीन साल तक वहां काम करेगा देन ओनली ही और शी विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड कि वहां पर चल क्या रहा है वॉट काइंड ऑफ इशूज आर देयर सो हम यहाँ पे सिक्योरिटी ऑफ टेन्योर की बात कर रहे हैं फॉर द डायरेक्टर्स एंड द सी एम डीज इन केस ऑफ पब्लिक अंडरटेकिंग ठीक है 
then we are having the next recommendation that is independent directors will have the independent directors and those independent directors will be appointed with the consultation of cmds consultation of cmd is very important because ultimately directors ko uske sath kaam karna hai and the coordination should be there and cmd is a, in a better position to understand what kind of person will be suited to the organization needs and what kind of person will not be able to suit so for that purpose we are saying that there should be wider consultation with the cmd and independent directors us tarike se appoint karne chahiye then we are having the greater autonomy to company boards and the employees issues company board ke paas greater autonomy chahiye aisa nahi hona chahiye ki minister will be having all the control and the government will be having all the control fir banane ka matlab hi kya fir to wo kaam hi nahi kar payenge so we are saying that day to day affairs jo honge employees ke usko deal karne ke liye and for you know uh, what you call the board ke decisions ka kam se kam autonomy hona chahiye that freedom should be available so that is also there then we have the change in mou system of performance management performance management se related jo hamare paas memorandum of memorandum of understanding the system is there usko hame change karna padega because wahan pe kya ho raha hai that uh, every time formalized too much of formalization is taking place so there is need for you know a performance management ko better karne ke liye we are supposed to you know shift from this mou system to uh the new kind of system jahan pe performance for example we can go for the mis that is management information system we can go for the new kind of tools that is pert that is performance evaluation and review techniques or we can go for the cpm that is critical path method to ye uh, basically pert zyada relevant hoga yahan pe so newer kind of techniques the tools can be used to analyze the performance theek hai so what you did completely in this particular question autonomy to the public undertakings is a myth to aap public undertaking humne sabse pehle baat ki why they are being established theek hai after that you will be talking about uh how they are being appointed and what is the difference between private and uh, public to public ko definitely aap introduction ke baad explain kar rahe ho ki government is having the major share then fir autonomy ki baat karoge throw out the answer and then you will be concluding with certain kind of suggestions ki uh, since the public sector undertakings are playing good uh, important role so there is high time that we should be going for the providing better autonomy to these kind of bodies theek okay? hai so this is about the third question we are having the next question and this question will be giving you very good insight with respect to ki upsc ki preparation how one should be doing and how important the newspaper reading is so why i am talking about that newspaper reading is very very important because there is a specific reason behind so what is that reason that is available in front of you the question that we are having is it should be people's it should be people's prime minister office it cannot be prime minister's pmo comment अगर कोई रोज न्यूज़पेपर पढ़ता होगा एंड एटलीस्ट मेजर न्यूज को फॉलो करता होगा देन डेफिनेटली दैट पर्सन वुड हैव कम अक्रॉस दिस न्यूज एग्जैक्टली ऑन द टेंथ जून 2024 मोदी जी वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस पीएमओ प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफिस एंड क्लियरली on 11th june it was published in the indian express and the hindu newspaper exactly same line yahan pe likhi hui thi statement was in the newspaper it should be people's prime minister office it cannot be modi pmo aisa statement modi ji ne bola tha 11 june ko aur hamara paper kab hua in september 3 mahine pehle jo news thi newspaper se directly upsc ne wahan se uthaya aur aapko question de diya so it is very important ki aap newspaper padho but i believe i sincerely believe ki agar aapne wo nahi bhi padha hai uh, what you call this news tab bhi fark nahi padta kyunki this question is not that difficult aap politics ki information se bhi aapko pata hai ki pmo ka kya kaam hai hai na so 
उस वजह से भी हो सकता है बट यहाँ पे एक एग्जाम्पल आई एम गिविन कि डायरेक्टली वहां से न्यूज से एक लाइन उठाई गई और आपको क्वेश्चन के फॉर्म में दे दिया गया वो राइट सो दैट इज द पर्पज बट अदरवाइज क्वेश्चन इज वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन में कुछ है नहीं वैसा कि आपको अगर आपने न्यूज पढ़ी डेफिनेटली जिसने न्यूज नहीं भी पढ़ी होगी हंड्रेड वो भी क्वेश्चन कर लेगा कोई डाउट नहीं उस पर बट आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू कन्वे की यूपीएससी यूज टू पिक द डायरेक्ट लाइन फ्रॉम द न्यूज ठीक है तो क्या पता कोई करंट करंट ओरिएंटेड चीज होती तो आपको पढ़ना पड़ता जिसने नहीं पढ़ा होता वो फिर टच नहीं कर पाता बट हेयर इट इज डिफिक इट इज वेरी इजी ठीक है सो यहां पे क्या बोला जा रहा है इट शुड बी पीपल्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफिस एंड कॉमा इट कैन नॉट बी प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स पीएमओ कमेंट ठीक है सो वी ऑलरेडी अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी द मीनिंग ऑफ गवर्नमेंट एंड द मीनिंग ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफिस तो क्या मतलब होता है वाई वी आर हैविंग दिस गवर्नमेंट सो बेसिकली वेन दर्टिकुलर सोसाइटी इज देयर तो वहां पे पीपल आर कमिंग टूगेदर तो उनको ऑर्गेनाइज करने के लिए मैनेज करने के लिए टू ब्रिंग अबाउट द यू नो पीस एंड हार्मोनी एंड द कोहेजन बिटवीन द पीपल हम गवर्नमेंट बनाते हैं एंड नाउ दैट गवर्नमेंट इज ड्यूटी बाउंड टू प्रोवाइड सर्टन सर्विस टू द पीपल गवर्नमेंट की गवर्नमेंट की जिम्मेदारी है कि हम लोगों को क्लीन ड्रिंकिंग वाटर शेल्टर प्लेसेस टू लिव फूड टू ईट ये सबकी व्यवस्था कराए गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट की जिम्मेदारी है सो सिमिलरली ऑन द वेरी सेम लॉजिक आपको रिलेट करना है इट शुड बी पीपल्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफिस इट कैन नॉट बी द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफिस सो बेसिकली प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफिस हम क्यों बना रहे हैं सो दैट इट विल बी कोऑर्डिनेटिंग द फंक्शन ऑफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर के काम को कॉर्डिनेट करेंगे सपोर्ट करेंगे इट विल बी द परमानेंट ऑफिस विच विल बी for supporting the prime minister's function functioning because prime minister is not any more uh, you know the normal person prime minister ko abhi canada ke prime minister ke sath meeting karni hai then the us president ke sath meeting karni hai and then somewhere you know <coughs> we are having the flood related issues and the, the what you call the military insurgency related issues and we are having the n number of issues तो सोचो अगर आप एक डिपार्टमेंट में मैनेजर हो एंड सपोज यू आर डीलिंग विद द मार्केटिंग है ना तो आपके पास क्या होगा यू विल बी हैविंग द मीटिंग विद द टीम एंड यू विल बी सजेस्टिंग वेज कि हम अच्छे तरीके से मार्केटिंग कैसे कर सकते हैं आपके पास क्या है सिर्फ एक डिपार्टमेंट है मार्केटिंग आपको सिर्फ मार्केटिंग करना है आपके ऊपर जो डायरेक्टर होगा उसके पास क्या होगा मार्केटिंग भी होगा सेल्स भी होगा एच भी होगा एंड सो मेनी अदर थिंग्स सारे डिपार्टमेंट होंगे तो यू कैन जस्ट इमेजिन द वर्क ऑफ दैट डायरेक्टर कि सब पे नजर रखनी है एंड नाउ यू थिंक अबाउट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ईच एंड एवरी थिंग दैट वी आर हैविंग इन अवर कंट्री इज बींग लुक आफ्टर बाई द प्राइम मिनिस्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर को सब पता होता है सो देर विल बी देर विल बी यू नो होम मिनिस्टर आ रहे हैं वहां पे डिफेंस मिनिस्टर इज कमिंग एंड यू नो the health minister is coming education minister is coming so many people are coming and they are you know they are giving their reports sabke sath meeting karni hai wo bol rahe health ministry mein hame ye issue aa raha hai kya decision lena chahiye so ultimately you know the prime minister is supposed to take the decision so us case mein kya hoga that uh you know prime minister is supposed to coordinate to agar kisi insaan ke paas itne kaam honge so definitely we should be having a particular office that is called as the prime minister office theek hai so in this case mein what we are supposed to do is that uh, prime minister office jo hoga that should not be supporting a particular person that is the prime minister but what we are supposed to do is that uh, the office is actually involved in the people's welfare people functioning office is working for the people's problem hai na it is serving the serving for solving the people's issues prime minister इश्यूज को सॉल्व करने के लिए ऑफिस नहीं होना चाहिए बट इट विल बी फंक्शनिंग फॉर द पीपल्स राइट पीपल्स यू नो पार्टिसिपेशन एंड इट विल बी एबल टू वर्क फॉर सॉल्विंग पीपल्स प्रॉब्लम ऑल द टाइम ठीक है तो अगर हम बात करें पर्टिकुलरली कि व्हाट काइंड ऑफ वर्क द पीएमओ विल बी डूइंग सो द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफिस Prime Minister Office 
द पी एम ओ है ना तो इस पर हमारे पास क्या है फर्स्ट वी कैन टॉक अबाउट दैट वी आर हैविंग द प्रोजेक्ट प्लानिंग प्रोजेक्ट प्लानिंग एंड देन वी आर हैविंग द रिसोर्स प्लानिंग वी आर हैविंग द रिसोर्स प्लानिंग देन वी आर हैविंग द कोलैबोरेशन कोलैबोरेशन राइट एंड इट्स एटसेट्रा फॉर एग्जाम्पल अदर विल बी द कॉस्ट मैनेजमेंट इंडस्ट्रीज बेस्ट प्रैक्टिसेस इट विल बी ट्राइंग टू इनकॉर्पोरेट देन विल हैव द स्टेक होल्डर्स कम्युनिकेशन स्ट्रैटेजिक डिसीजन मेकिंग इट विल बी हेल्पिंग इन एवरीवेयर ठीक है तो वेन इट कम्स टू दिस पर्टिकुलर यू नो द आंसर सो आई होप इट इज मेकिंग गुड सेंस कि जो हमारी डेमोक्रेसी की डेफिनेशन है जो गवर्नमेंट की डेफिनेशन है उसी लाइन्स में हम बात करेंगे फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर आपको कल को क्वेश्चन दे दिया जाता है दैट आई ए एस ऑफिसर इज नॉट सपोज टू वर्क वर्क फॉर द वर्क फॉर हिमसेल्फ or is not supposed to work on the personal interest but it is supposed to work for the people so aapko kya karna padega again the same answer will be there that is the kind of office he is wearing or she is wearing is for the people is for the public the 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 government of india or he has been appointed for looking after the problem of a particular district hai right? na so that officer is supposed to work for the people day and night and the office facilities that we have provided that person is supposed to utilize for that purpose and not otherwise theek okay? hai so that way we will be dealing with this particular question then after that we are having the next question that is the fifth one so in this session we will be talking about this question only this is the last question and uh, in the going forward in the upcoming parts like this will be the paper 1 part 1 and the rest of the parts will be coming later on okay so what is the question implementation of goods and services tax that is gst theek hai hamare paas gst aaya had led to pragmat uh, paradigm shift in center state relations both financially and politically theek hai to yahan pe ye bola ja raha hai कि जब से जीएसटी आया है इट हैज चेंज द सेंटर स्टेट रिलेशंस, ठीक है और वो रिलेशंस कैसे चेंज करने सो so, हमारे पास क्या है जीएसटी इट हैज लेड टू चेंज इन द सेंटर स्टेट रिलेशंस, सेंटर स्टेट रिलेशंस, ठीक है एंड वो सेंटर स्टेट रिलेशन को कैसे चेंज किया है फाइनेंशियली क्वेश्चन इज और भी तरीके से चेंज किया होगा बट क्वेश्चन इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द फाइनेंशियली फाइनेंशियल एंड द पॉलिटिकल आस्पेक्ट पॉलिटिकल इट विल बी रियली गुड इफ यू विल बी राइटिंग द फाइनेंशियल एंड द पॉलिटिकल आस्पेक्ट सेपरेटली ठीक है सो क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट दैट इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ जीएसटी हार्ड लेट टू पैराडीम शिफ्ट in the center state relations both financially and politically theek hai so you are here supposed to emphasize on the fact first of all you will be writing about the gst theek hai ab gst ke bare mein baat karenge introduction mein like this is a kind of uniform legislation and it has provided for clarity uh, with respect to the taxation system in india otherwise earlier we were having so many taxes तो लोगों को क्लैरिटी नहीं होती थी कि टैक्स किस चीज का लग रहा है क्या लग रहा है नाउ ऑल दोज टैक्सेस हैव बीन इंटीग्रेटेड बारिंग फ्यू ठीक है एंड वी हैव प्रोवाइडेड फॉर द अम्ब्रेला टैक्सेस दैट इज द जीएसटी गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज टैक्स अब आप कुछ भी परचेज करोगे कुछ भी ट्रांजेक्शन करोगे जीएसटी विल बी एप्लीकेबल है ना सो दैट इज द जीएसटी नाउ वेन द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट वॉज हैविंग डिफरेंट पावर्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द टैक्सेशन एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के अपने अलग पावर्स थे अब जीएसटी की वजह से ऑल ऑफ देम हैव बीन क्लब्ड ठीक है सो 
अगर वो सब क्लब कर दिए गए एंड डेफिनेटली इट डज नॉट मीन कि सारे के सारे टैक्सेस जो भी सारे हमने क्लब कर दिए नो स्टिल देर आर सेपरेट टैक्सेस वो अभी भी अवेलेबल है ठीक है सो जीएसटी ने क्लब कर दिए सो मेनी टैक्सेस सो दो टैक्सेस की वजह से अब क्या होगा सेंड वन यूनिफॉर्म टैक्स इज देयर अब क्या जीएसटी विल बी एप्लीकेबल जीएसटी विल बी गोइंग टू सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट देन सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट विल बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग द जीएसटी टू सेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट अब स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का जीएसटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में डिले हो जाता है सो दैट विल बी इश्यूज बिटवीन द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट और नॉट ठीक है सो दैट्स इन इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स द क्वेश्चन हैज बीन आस्ड कि इसके आने की वजह से वी आर हैविंग यू नो इश्यूज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द फाइनेंशियल एंड द पॉलिटिकल रिलेशंस ठीक है सो पर्टिकुलरली इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द रिलेशन तो यहां पे हम फाइनेंशियल रिलेशन की अगर बात करें तो वी कैन वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द फाइनेंस कमीशन रोल ठीक है फाइनेंस कमीशन के रोल की बात करेंगे दैट इट इज द फाइनेंस कमीशन विच इज प्रोवाइडिंग फॉर द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ टैक्सेस सो इट हैज बीन सीन दैट फाइनेंस कमीशन हैज बीन बायस टूवर्ड्स द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट बिकॉज हु इज अपॉइंटिंग द फाइनेंस कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया डेफिनेटली इट इज द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट ठीक है ऑल दो इट इज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडी अंडर आर्टिकल टू एटी ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बट it is it has been seen that it has been biased towards the center so center state relations kya ho rahe hain they are being changing and definitely we can say that the center state relations are changing so uh, it it is definitely due to the coming up of gst it is it is because of the coming up of gst we can say that okay then if we are talking about the political relations so what we are having in case of this gst we have provided for the gst council okay so gst council will be uh, the kind of body which will be you know trying to bring about the cooperative federalism it will be trying to bring about the cooperative federalism and uh, de so definitely earlier what we were having earlier we were having the uh, interstate council abhi bhi all the interstate council is very much taking place we are having the zonal councils also so uh, yes if you are talking about this the financial and the political relations तो डेफिनेटली वी विल बी एरिंग दिस दिस काइंड ऑफ पॉइंट्स एंड हम बोल सकते हैं एक तो हमारे पास पॉलिटिकल इश्यू पहले से चल रहा है दैट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इज हैविंग कंट्रोल ओवर द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट बाय वे ऑफ अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ गवर्नर नाउ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट विल बी कंट्रोलिंग द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट फर्दर बिकॉज द काइंड ऑफ पावर दैट दे वर इंजॉइंग विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द टैक्सेशन अब वो जीएसटी के अंदर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के पास जाएगी so definitely that way we can say that the central government will be exercising more control over the state government theek hai and that kind of distribution of taxes that the central state were having now they have been changed they have been changed okay so you will be talking about the gst in the introduction theek hai and then after that what is the question implementation of gst led to paradigm shift so then you will be talking about how the paradigm shift in case of financial relation and how the paradigm shift in case of the uh, what you call this political relations and then you will be concluding on the same lines that yes we based on the our fact we can say that uh, the significant changes have been taken place i hope the structure is very clear and content i may not be providing uh, everything but uh, i hope you understand the idea that here we are just providing the uh, direction like how the uh, questions can be dealt right so i hope all these questions uh, made good sense to you in the next part that is part 2 paper 2 part 2 will be coming uh, very soon and uh, uh, i believe that it will be helping you uh, going forward uh, for all those people who are going to appear in 2025 and beyond thank you